What's up everyone, it's your boy Norrin Rad89 here bringing you another video and for today's video we're going to be talking about Cobra Kai Season 3. I finally binged all 10 episodes, so like I said today we're going to digest the season, talk about it, my feelings on it, and going into Season 4, what are my feelings going to happen and all that kind of stuff. And like I said, just my thoughts on this show, but be sure to share yours in the comment section because we also got the announcement that Season 6 will be dropping this year, so I'm going to be trying to finish the series before season six drops, that way we can do our review and watch that one as well. So let's get into this. Roll it. So right off the bat, in terms of Cobra Kai, where they left us off at season two was a pretty dark path for pretty much everybody. Like all our like favorite people, you know, Johnny, Miguel, like Amanda, Daniel, like all of them are kind of in a bad place. Kreese took the dojo from Johnny and now he's running Cobra Kai. So that's kind of where we're at at the beginning of the season. Robbie's on the run because of what happened to Miguel. So let's talk about season three. And one thing for sure is the theme. I think there's very strong themes with each season of Cobra Kai. And what it seems like for me in terms of season three is that it's a very, it's a season that focuses a lot on traumatic experiences and what that is, what that's like for someone, how people deal with it and how others, how it affects others, you know what I mean? And the kind of the community as well. So that's what I think is kind of the central strong theme of this one because it has to do a lot of it has to carry on from the previous season about the fight that happened at the school and it has serious repercussions going into season three and throughout the entire season as well. My favorite storyline arc though for season three is easily going to be Johnny and Miguel. Johnny has consistently been my favorite character throughout the entire show and this season in particular the storyline between him and Miguel and him having to basically fight to be Miguel's sensei again and pull him out of a bad rut because Miguel is like now he was in a coma then he comes out of it and then he has to get surgery and learn how to walk again so all those are very very hard things to deal with and very like said things that it's like I couldn't even imagine what it's like to have to deal with that and have to learn how to walk again and Johnny's able to pull Miguel like I said out of that dark rut and they become a, a duo very much closer than they were in the previous season. Another thing we have going on in the season is Daniel LaRusso and his a lot of his storyline in the first few episodes has to do with Robbie and finding Robbie and then when they finally do they have Robbie they basically get the cops and kind of like get Robbie in a trap and he ends up in juvie because they want they want the best for him and he needs to you know like I said turn himself in go through the, what it feels like you know to kind of have to go through juvie because he gets charged with the you know the heinous act of almost you know assault assaulting Miguel is basically what happened you know what I mean and Robbie was on the run so that's the kind of thing that lands Robbie in the situation where he's in juvie but he feels like he can't trust anybody he can't trust his father he can't trust Daniel and now he's all alone in a juvenile facility having to deal with that kind of society what it's like inside there so that's kind of Robbie's storyline in this series it's not really my favorite storyline to be honest Robbie and Daniel LaRusso they have I wouldn't say the I would say yeah probably the weakest storylines in this season and that that like I said that's just coming from me I'm mean, being honest when Daniel LaRusso's story goes into him going to Okinawa and meeting some of the characters that we previously known from Karate Kid 2 going back to where Mr. Miyagi took him and stuff and kind of relearning and going back to his home and stuff and like I said he's also going there to try to win a contract for a car company for his company you know what I mean to have certain cars go to his sailing place so yeah all that kind of stuff is going on with Daniel and it's just for me it's not as interesting I feel like that's the weakest part of this season and it takes away from a lot of the other stuff I'm having fun with like Johnny and Miguel Amanda and Tori like even their their storyline is pretty awesome like I like the the girls how they have a very heavy storyline going on and Amanda's another one that has to do with the theme of having to deal with traumatic experiences and you know she has panic attacks anxiety all this stuff because of what happened at the school and what went down with Tori and all of them so yeah this season I think has a very strong theme at the center of it and like I said those other characters like I love I'm having a cool with her, or Samantha, I said Amanda LaRusso, that's her mom, Samantha was the one I was talking about, Sam is the one that's going through these traumatic experiences and panic attacks and stuff, but Amanda LaRusso, let's go back to the mom, she has fun in this season as well, because she gets a lot of cool moments, one of my favorites is when she gets to confront Kreese, 
about the way he's treating Cobra Kai kids and what they're doing to other kids. And yeah, she she gets a really good slap in there and stuff. And Kreese kind of goes the, you know, almost the dirty route and kind of backstabs her and goes to the police and files a restraining order and all this kind of stuff. So it's it's just a really cool, like, little tiny arc. It's just a little tiny fun arc, but Amanda LaRusso gets to do a lot more kind of stuff that's out of the norm of her character in this season. Another fabulous storyline that I liked that I was having a lot of fun with was Hawks and how he's dealing with Cobra Kai and Kreese as a sensei, because we follow a lot with Hawk this season on how, like I said, how the sensei and how Cobra Kai's doing after Johnny's gone and how Hawk has, you know, kind of just, he's afraid, not afraid, but he's like, you know, he's kind of having doubts about how Kreese is running Cobra Kai and letting in new people, kicking out old people, you know what I mean? And kind of teaching a different way than Johnny was teaching. So it's cool how they're having a good story arc for Hawk, because I thought he was just gonna be maybe consistently just the villain. He was gonna be the opposite of Miguel, the one that stayed in Cobra Kai and they were always gonna be bashing and bumping heads now. But now, and Dimitri as well, you know, I mean, Hawk and Dimitri bumping heads all the time. So this season, I like what they did with Hawk's character and his arc. And by the time we get to that ending episode and you see him and Miguel walk out together and they're going, going to join the duo do dojo that, you know, Daniel and Johnny are going to have now with Miyagi-Do and Eagle Fang, which I thought was hilarious, Eagle Fang Dojo teaming up together. So having Miguel and Hawk when they walk out in that last episode, I was like, all right, cool. We have a good landing spot for me with that character. But let's get into some of the mixed and negatives because I have a couple things. When it comes to season three, there's a lot of things I did like about this season. But in terms of the three seasons I've digested so far, I think season three is the most jam-packed. This is the most cluttered with a lot of story arcs and I don't feel all of them get their due justice. And like we even have Kreese getting his kind of flashback storylines in this season i think just about every other episode starts with like a crease flashback which to me that got kind of annoying like i understand they're trying to make crease more of a three-dimensional character and we're supposed to be understanding him more than just being a villain you know we're supposed to kind of not like sympathize with him but just understand more where he's coming from because of what they're doing with his flashbacks and stuff but it's kind of getting to that point now where it's getting kind of annoying. Like I said, when Kreese got introduced at the end of the first season and then how the second season went down, I knew as it was going on, I was just like, I, I wonder how long it's going to take for me to get tired of this guy. And in season three, this is kind of the point. By the end of this season, I'm kind of getting a little bit tired of Kreese's character, but he is serving a purpose and he's pushing the story forward. I'm just not enjoying it completely with his character. But I must say the the fight at the end of this season with Johnny and Kreese is might be my favorite in the show. Just the way Johnny comes in there and he dominates and stuff in the way when he sees Robbie training with Kreese, like, oh man, that scene was just, it was so potent. And then Johnny just goes at him. He doesn't even have any words to say. He's like, I'm taking you down, dog. And like, that fight was probably one of my favorite fights in the show so far. And in terms of season four, which is going to be coming up, that's the next one I'm going into. I already know one of the characters that's coming back in just because the show's been going on. And I've had some things spoiled for me over the years. So I know a certain character is showing up in season four, especially because Chris calls him at the end of the show on episode 10 saying that he needs help and he's going to have another teammate now probably doing the Cobra Kai dojo with him because he's got to put go against, you know, Daniel and Johnny who are now teaming up together. So what I'm hoping for season four is that we have a lot of fun stuff going on with Johnny and Daniel and teaching the kids, but I don't want there to be too much you know, tussling and like head bumping and them fighting, but I know they're going to do that. That's another thing that's, it's getting to a point where it's getting kind of annoying. Like I kind of feel like the wives and the girlfriend kind of thing, like when they were talking at that dinner table with Johnny and Daniel and they're like, dang, you guys really hate each other. And it's like, you went after him for this and this, and it's, it's like a constant thing since high school. So it's getting to that point where it's getting a little bit annoying. So I'm hoping in season four, they're able to see more eye to eye. Johnny and Daniel have a better understanding and that them teaming up against Kreese is going to help their bond, you know, change, change their friendship and actually turn into a friendship more than a rivalry. And also another thing I have problems with this season is there's a lot of writer's convenience, a lot. Like there's a ton. I'm talking about like Daniel, the fact that he went to Okinawa to win this contract, he doesn't end up winning the contract at first, but he goes through like training sessions and then he ends up meeting the girl character that he saved from the second movie from the storm in Japan. 
and she just so happens to work at the car place he's trying to get the deal with and like you know what i mean this writer's convenience right there that's that's the kind of stuff there's another one with miguel and samantha when they're training and robbie gets out of juvie and just so happens to show up at daniel's house when they're training together like they're not even kissing or anything they're just doing karate together and stuff but man that that's what i'm talking about that soap opery writer's convenience stuff actually kind of bothers me a little bit and i noticed that's probably my least favorite thing about this season is when i watch the first two seasons they feel very natural it's a natural flow they take their time with the storylines and i feel like the growth like i said is natural and by the time we get to episode 10 you just feel like it was it was a cool progression, a cool story, and you're enjoying it. For this season three, I feel like there's a ton, a ton of writer's convenience, and it's becoming much more dramatization. Like I said, I'm still having a fucking fun last time with this show. I'm still highly enjoying myself, and the characters are very interesting. Like I said, Johnny and Miguel are gravitating towards Hawk and Samantha more now because they have a lot more potent storylines going on. So that's one thing I must say is too. Season three made Daniel's daughter a much more prominent character and she has a cool storyline how she's, you know, tussling with Tori. But like I said, overall, there still is a lot going on in season three. It's jam-packed. It's very stuffed with a lot of content. And like I said, there's tons of writer's convenience. Another one of example is when John Lee finally hooks up with Miguel's mom, which was a great moment. Like I, I was grinning from ear to ear and was so happy for Johnny and Miguel's mom to have that moment. And then he has that, you know, like now he messages, what's her name on Facebook? And like, she's messaging him. Like, you know, I know their date doesn't really kind of go anywhere in season three. It's much more like she just kind of affirms to Johnny who he is and how he's in a better place than where he was and how he's on the right path and stuff. So it does play out better, but I'm just saying that just just, just just writer's convenience, baby, come on. Like that kind of stuff really does bother me. Just the chances, the odds of that stuff are astronomical of it to happen, but it happens. But still, like I said, I'm still having a freaking fun time with this show. Can't wait to start season four because I'm going to be starting that probably tonight. I'll probably get a few episodes of season four in. And like I said, try to finish this out, pop out my review for that, then carry on to season five. Then season six will be dropping this year and we'll be digesting that. And if you really want me to possibly go through episode by episode, or if you want me to just do the season as a whole, let me know in the comments too for season six when it premieres. Would you like or like full on episode reviews or would you like just a review of the whole season like after I binge all of season six so let me know in the comments but also let me know what you thought of season three is this one of your favorites is this kind of lower on your list I would love to hear from all of you because we all have different opinions this is some of the best things about us but most importantly I want y'all to have a safe and happy day peace out